What's going on guys? So the SAT season is here, all right? And I know you guys are studying hard. You guys want that high 1400 score, that high 1500 score. And for the overachievers, the 1600. And in order to get that score, you gotta put in a lot of work. And but I'm here to guide you on how I personally got a 1540 on my SAT and how you can too. So the way this video is gonna go is first I'm gonna share my own story, my SAT experience. And then I'm gonna talk about, in general, the math section and the English section of the SAT. And then I'm gonna go into how you can do better on each individual part of the SAT, each subsection, and how you can ultimately maximize your score. So my SAT experience began in really 11th grade when I got my PSAT score and I saw I got a 1350 on it, which is really not that good. And after that, I started seeing everyone else getting like 1420s, high 1400s in, on their PSAT. And I was like, dang, like, I really need to start studying. So I did some practices and I basically had this study regime that I'm going to talk about in this video. And I ultimately was able to turn my 1350 on my PSAT to a 1530 the first time ever I took the SAT. So I took the SAT twice. The first time I got a 1530 and the second time I got a 1490. But my super score was altogether a 1540 with an 800 math score, which is obviously a perfect. And I actually made a video on how to get a perfect math SAT score. So be sure to watch that after this. Another thing just to add is that I never ever opened one of these. These are big SAT books. This is from 2014. This is the College Board SAT book. These have been my library for the past three years since my sister first used them and I have yet to open them. And I'm just gonna tell you guys that you don't need to use big textbooks or go to SAT learning institutions to get high, a high score. And cause I didn't and I'm sure by the end of this video you guys will know how to get a over 1500 without using these thick, thick books. I cannot stress enough how much timing is important on the SAT. All right, so if we talk about each individual section, let's go into math no calculator. For the math no calculator section, you're given 25 minutes. And ideally, if you want a really high score, you want to be able to finish the non-calc SAT math section within 12 to 13 minutes. Now, I know that's basically half the time you're allotted, but the thing is, if you're able to finish that section within that time frame, that means you know all the content quite well and you know every single trick that is in the non-calculator section. That also means you have plenty of time to review all of your work and make sure you didn't make any simple mathematical errors. Now personally, when I took my SAT the first time, I finished it in uh, roughly 13 minutes and the second time I actually finished it in 9 minutes because by the second time I already knew every trick that, was, that would pop up on the math SAT and you guys can too. So make sure that's your target time goal. Now for the calculator section, you're given, hold up, 55 minutes. And you want to finish that in roughly 45 to 50 minutes. Not as fast, obviously, as a no calculator section because there aren't as many tricks on the calculator section. But at the same time, you want to be quite efficient with your work and you want to have time left over to check all your work. Now for the writing section, there's 44 questions and you're given 35 minutes. So that means you have less than a minute per question, which is actually quite manageable given that most of the questions should really only take you 10 to 15 seconds max. And personally, I was able to finish my writing section in uh, 38 minutes, I mean 32 minutes, that went bad. I finished my section in 32 minutes, which is actually cutting it really close to the 35 minute uh, timestamp. But you, what you really ideally want to aim for is to finish the writing section within 30 minutes. That is quite ambitious, but if you're able to finish in that time, you have so much time on your hands to review your work because five minutes may seem short, but the writing section, you can review each question, each answer within five to 10 seconds and then you'll be set. Now for the reading section, you're given 52 questions and we have 65 minutes. Now, what that means is you have more than a minute per question, but you, have, you also have to take into account all the passages and how long it takes you to read those. And in my experience, I finished my reading section within 50 minutes, which is only two minutes right before the time stop. And the thing with the reading section is you really just want to answer each question as you go to the best of your ability so you don't have to go back and check your work. Because with the reading section, checking your work can really take a lot of time and most of the times when you go back and you change your answers 
Most of the times you're right the first time, and when you change it back, you have to change it to the wrong answer. And now we're gonna talk about the tips and tricks section of the SAT, which is probably the part of the video that you guys care about the most and that you want to listen closely to. So if we talk about the non-calculator section, there's so many tips and tricks you can use that I could not discuss them all in one video. But what I did do is create a playlist of uh, videos where I showcase some of the many tricks that you can use on the SAT non-calc section to finish a problem within 10 to 20 seconds. And I even have videos where I take the SAT non-calculator section live in front of you guys and you guys can literally see all the tricks I implement to finish each problem quickly. So be sure to check those out. Those videos are probably the most helpful videos on my channel. For the calculator section, you honestly just want to practice a lot because most of the tricks on the math SAT are for the no calculator section. But if you if you really want, do want a high score in the math SAT, my opinion is you should use Khan Academy. Like I talk about this in all my videos, Khan Academy is, in my opinion, the single-handed greatest resource for the math SAT and SAT in general. It, it eliminates the need for books like these and this book, right? You don't want to use these books. But one book you do want to use, I actually have it in the, my description below, is the SAT Black Book. The SAT Black Book actually has so many tips and tricks on the SAT that you can use that that you can really finish any problem really quickly. And, you, and if you're going to buy a book, if you're that person who likes to read, read about tips and tricks, then I highly recommend getting the SAT Black Book. A lot of my friends say it's amazing, it's great. And I did look at it like two weeks ago, well, you know, a year after I took the SAT, you know, and I, I kind of regret not using that book back then. Another big tip I can give you for the SAT math part is to practice, practice, practice. Because the thing with the SAT, as I uh, complete, you know, many of the practice tests that College Board has to offer, they have the exact same questions, just differently worded. And if you practice, 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 you'll be able to recognize those types of questions, like the linear of uh, system of equation questions or the, the circle question, the triangle questions. You'll be able to recognize them so quickly that you know exactly which trick to apply to the problem so you can solve a one minute problem within 10 seconds. So for the writing section of the SAT, what you want to do is you really want to make sure you know your grammar Okay, you want to know the difference between an independent dependent clause, a colon, and a semicolon. Know that a colon emphasizes the statement while a semicolon is used to join two ideas, two independent clauses. You want to know all the grammar nuances because once you do that, all you have to do is just keep taking practice tests, at least three or four practice tests on the writing section because this is one of the biggest things about the SAT, all right? This is a, a, very, a, a very key principle the, about the SAT. The SAT repeats problems. Now, I'm not saying verbatim. Obviously, the text is different or uh, the passage is different. The concept is the same. So if you keep practicing, and you know what principles and what concepts the SAT will actually throw at you in the writing section quite frequently. So when you do see them, you're, you'll are you be able to um, think about the, which principle applies to this question, and you'll be able to solve the grammar questions quite quickly. So just if you want to know a resource you can use to practice your grammar skills or learn some grammar in case you know you're unfamiliar with certain clauses, certain uh, punctuation marks, use Khan Academy. Khan Academy is a whole database where it has a lot of grammar practices, a lot of grammar laws, principles, videos where you can that uh, you can use to really know when to use which uh, punctuation, when to use which clause, how this affects this, and you'll be able to sharpen your grammar skills quite efficiently. So for the reading section, one of the tips I use that actually did help, and this is going to sound really dumb, is you want to force yourself to be excited about the text you're going to read. And I kid you not, there was one, one of the articles I had to read for my 740 uh, was about Lincoln, and uh, I'm not a history guy at all. So when I saw the, the text title, it read something like The Civil War and Abraham Lincoln. I was like, wow, The Civil War? Abraham Lincoln, oh my God, I can't wait to read this. And I know that's basically being fake to yourself, but when you do that, you're almost programming your mind to be excited for this text. And when you're excited for a text, you start drawing connections subconsciously. And when you're able to do that, you'll be able to remember the text better, comprehend it better, and as a result, answer questions better. Let me give you an example on how you should be drawing connections as you read, okay? So say in the beginning of the text, it talks about how humans are throwing a bunch of toxic waste into the water. And then in the middle of the text, it talks about 
how dolphins are dying because of toxic waste in the water. I, you should be able to draw that connection that it's because of humans' actions that dolphins are dying. Because of humans throwing toxic waste into the ocean, dolphins are dying. Because I'm sure one of the questions will ask, what's, a, what's one of the major effects of humans' actions in, a, in relation to aquatic life? And then it, the next question will be, what's a quote that supports this? And the, that quote will be, dolphins are dying because of toxic waste. Something like that is very common on the SAT. So you want to be able to draw connections as you read. Another tip I can give you is to always keep asking questions as you read. And every time a new topic is introduced. For example, the dolphin uh, example. Say when you first read that line that says, Dolph that says dolphins are dying because of toxic waste in the ocean. You want to ask the question, why is there toxic waste in the ocean? And then you want to look for the answer as you continue to read. Because when you do uh, small things like that and you start asking questions, you automatically program your mind to look for the answer within the text. And that's ultimately how you're able to make those connections. Now, I know for the science passage especially, that's one of the best ways to get almost a perfect on the science section. Like In my opinion, uh, well at least in my experience, I got perfect on both of my science sections for both the SATs I took and all my practice tests because I would always ask questions to myself about why are thermodynamics being used in space more? Why are cars um, losing battery life faster? And that's really, that's really what you got to do to make sure you get a nice score on the English section of the SAT. Ultimately, I hope you guys have the best of luck because if I was able to increase almost 200 points, I'm sure you guys can too. The SAT the thing is, it seems threatening, but it's really not that bad as you start studying. Okay, so use Khan Academy, and if you use Khan Academy, you don't, you, don't, you don't have to use these thick books right here. But if you do want to use a thick book, if you're that person, and also I do recommend this book because it's not it's not like you know, a waste of time because it has a bunch of tricks that you know basically simplify the SAT. Just buy the SAT Black Book, which is in the, the description below, and you can really use that to pick up some skills. Or of course, if you, if you don't want to you know, spend any dough, you can just uh, look at my channel, uh, look at my playlist where I have a full test that I take for the SAT math section. And you can see what the tricks I use for it. And you can see um, basically my thought process behind uh, the, each problem. If you like the video, please share, please subscribe, uh, comment down below, make sure you watch my playlist, get the SAT black book. Uh, if you like the video, please share, please subscribe, get the SAT black book, look at my videos on my channel that go over tips and tricks, and just leave some nice feedback below and make sure you guys stay calm and do well on the SAT. I'm sure you guys can go over 1500, so thanks for watching. Peace.